it would be a grave mistake to try and dominate or manipulate the democratic process for short-term objectives. While the international community has an important role to play, as it did in the struggle against apartheid and other repressive regimes, it must be understood that this struggle is first and foremost that of the Iranian people. A particular aspect of a principled foreign policy that I wish to raise with this commission today is the question of accountability for human rights violations. This is an area where the international community has an important role to play. From its very inception, the Islamic Republic has engaged in widespread and systematic human rights violations against its citizens. Arbitrary executions, torture, religious and political persecution, even assassination of hundreds of dissidents abroad. These are the hallmarks of a government that has extinguished the lives of countless thousands as a means of staying in power. There is a di direct connection between impunity for such atrocities and the continuation of repressive policies. It doesn't take much imagination to realize that the assumption of public office by those that should be prosecuted for crimes against humanity is not conducive either to a domestic policy of reform or to a foreign policy of good neighborly relations. In the ordinary course of events, such abuses would be handled by an independent and impartial judiciary. In Iran, however, it is the judiciary itself that is an instrument of repression, as demonstrated by the long list of senior Iranian officials implicated in serious human rights abuses. A genuine democratic transformation requires justice for the victims of these crimes and a shift in the boundaries of power and legitimacy in a system where a culture of impunity has prevailed for so long. There is an inextricable relationship between holding leaders accountable for human rights violations, opening a space for democracy and civil dialogue, and the transformation of Iran's regional posture. Informed Iranian sources have indicated to me in uncert no uncertain terms that to send a message to the Iranian leadership that they will be held to account for their crimes beyond the borders of Iran. A point of departure in such an undertaking is simply to document and publicize the truth. The Iran Human Rights Documentation Center, established in 2003, has engaged in the publication of meticulously detailed analytic reports that address human rights violations and attempt to identify those most responsible in the hopes that the uncovering of the truth will make it much more difficult to avoid a reckoning with the past when the opportunity presents itself. The center has the good fortune of being treated with suspicion by both ends of the political spectrum. Those that believe it is part of a right-wing conspiracy to legitimize the invasion of Iran, and those that think that it is an inconsequential left-wing NGO. The reality is that the center's dedicated staff have labored to prepare some of the best documented analytic human rights reports on Iran, including two on the persecution of Baha'is, which are widely disseminated in Iran, and which it is hoped will contribute to creating a space for internalizing accountability in any future democratic scenario. Some governments have privately expressed support uh, for the center, but are reluctant to, to, to publicly endorse it for fear of alienating the Iranian government. Multilateral support, however, is vital for engaging the international community in a process that should eventually give rise to a more formal mechanism for identifying those responsible for crimes against humanity with a view to stigmatizing and isolating them both in Iran and abroad. There is a need for a concerted international policy of ensuring accountability, and this at least requires serious consideration and an informed dialogue aimed at exploring its potential impact. One starting point could be the extension of UN Security Council targeted sanctions against those involved in the nuclear industry to those implicated in serious human rights abuses. Travel bans and asset freezes on human rights grounds could contribute to the isolation of elements responsible for international crimes and empower those discouraged by the impression of invincibility created by hardliners. Other more vigorous options could include an international commission of inquiry or even discussion of an international criminal tribunal that in due course could bring perpetrators of crimes against humanity to justice. My purpose today is not to elaborate in great detail the form and shape 
that such a process may eventually take, but simply to emphasize the tremendous importance of accountability to any principled foreign policy. I'm aware that those of a realist persuasion may dismiss this theme and these proposals as naive idealism. But I'm comforted by the fact that when I served as legal advisor to the prosecutor of the UN Yugoslav Tribunal, we received the exact same treatment, only to become one of the most important instruments of governance and post-conflict peace building in the Balkans. We must elevate our sights beyond narrow immediate considerations and realize that a better future cannot be built without reckoning with the past, that a principled approach is the only lasting basis for stability, and that the achievement of democracy and human rights by the Iranian people holds the potential of completely transforming the Middle East, Middle, Middle East region. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.